All right, hello, citizens of the Nigerverse. It is Niger here once again, and, and welcome back to System Shock Radio. So, oh, I know I have been uh, MIA for the past week and a half. Have uh, I do apologize? Uh, some stuff came up, up, uh, up, uh, but but um, but I am back and do have quite a bit to catch up on. So we will be doing that all throughout the week. So because we have quite a bit of ground to cover her and because the month of July is almost over uh, next w- week like this upcoming week will be uh, the next three episodes of the Money Night Wars analysis so stay tuned for those and we got some other stuff coming that I think you guys are really going to enjoy yeah, so because I was kind of off on another kind of impromptu vacation if you will so, uh, so, uh, from making content for for a little bit, hit uh, hit uh, system tracker and Silicon Lab are once again off for a week, which they were before, so I guess we're even up, kinda. But um, but I'll try not to. I'll, I try not to take these uh, sporadic break breaks. Uh, breaks. But sometimes you know, you, sometimes you just need uh, some time to uh, re- to uh, recuperate, recharge, uh, what have you. But I am back now, and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy the topic on this episode as well. So. Without further ado, let's get right into it. And of course, if you are indeed new to System Shock Radio, welcome. If not, welcome back. But if you are uh, new here, uh, what we do is we talk about a variety of topics, uh, including uh, some current events, some pro wrestling, some nerd stuff like comic books, video games, and stuff like that. That uh, we do some inspiration, so we do all kinds of stuff. So if that is your kind of thing, uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button, and as well as leaving a like and a comment. Uh, but without further ado. Get right into it. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is a big one, and that is the Marvel Marvel vs. Capcom fighting uh, collection. So, uh, so oh, oh, uh, the Marvel vs. Capcom fi- uh, fighting collection arcade classic uh, was announced a little while ago. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out in 2024, or and uh, and uh, the games will include who uh, they have the listed in here is Cursey from. Uh, hub uh, from the Capcom Games website. Hey, uh, it will include X Men: Children of the Atom, Marvel Superheroes, X Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and finally the Punisher. Or so. Oh, admittedly, I kind of came late to the Marvel vs. Capcom series. Is uh, my first Marvel vs. Capcom game actually wasn't until Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on my uh, PS3. He, uh, and then I had Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Sadly, Infinite wasn't as good, and a lot of people pointed out Infinite wasn't as good as the other um, as the other entries. He's uh, in in the uh, series, and so I was kind of laid dormant for a bit. But people had been begging for uh, for for a return of the Marvel's Capcom games, and asking you shall receive, and asking you shall receive. Uh, with the uh, collection here, or, uh, or, uh, and I imagine, and that was probably due to like licensing and everything, and uh, but and, but now I guess they got like sorted out to have the collection here, and this is one that a lot of people uh, feel like they should have a physical uh, copy of, of, mainly because of, uh, with the possibility of these being taken away once again, and a lot of people want to still have access to them. Um, uh, and which it's totally understand that makes sense. Like, like uh, things sadly get deleted from libraries almost all the time. And do I think I'll get a physical copy of this? I'm not entirely sure yet. But so far, the platforms, at least uh, the ones listed in here, here, uh, here uh, are are for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Steam. And, uh, and surprisingly, you no, know, uh, surprisingly no. Oh, uh, Xbox or anything, and although I wonder if that stuff will be added later, because that that does happen from time to time. For example, for a while, uh, Cuphead was only on uh, Xbox uh, One and uh, Switch, and then and uh, eventually it made its way to PS4 and everything. But and but but at the time I had already gotten it on my uh, Switch. But um, but yeah, so oh uh oh pretty oh uh pretty interesting, pretty cool there, and and this uh, game is gonna even have uh, things like online play and everything. So we're going going full full force uh, with the collection here. So let me know in the comments, are you guys excited for the Marvel vs. Capcom collection? And uh, this will be for me this will be a great way to go back and um and catch up on the games that I missed. Uh, this uh, and another example I can kinda uh, uh, give is the uh, like the uh, 
the uh, Street Fighter collection uh, for the, the uh, 30th anniversary that they did uh, a few years ago. Uh, where they had all the Street Fighter games and everything, in which I do have my Switch. I'm going back to uh, uh, playing those because obviously the, uh, those were well before my time. But but, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Let me know if you guys are as well. Uh, but next uh, up, uh, up uh, uh, it's time to talk about the Dr. Disrespect situation. Now, sadly, one of the one of the downsides of these little sabbaticals of mine is that at, uh, at with the way the internet is, news comes and goes, and, so, and sometimes some stuff uh, is old news. Now, oh, this is a situation where it is kind of old news, but it is something I still find uh, relatively important to, to uh, talk about, or, or at the very least uh, bring up, up, uh, up and uh, address. But, uh, <coughs> uh, but uh, if you are unfamiliar with the situation with Dr. Disrespect, I kind of catch you up, up, uh, up from what I've been uh, looking into and what I've been able to read. Uh, he, he was uh, a major, major streamer on uh, Twitch, uh, he, but had, uh, to the point where he even, uh, <coughs> to the point where he even had a contract with Twitch in, uh, t uh, uh, in uh, 2020, he uh, but in 2020, he or, or the contract might have been before then, and but in 2020, his Twitch account was terminated, which it's a lot of people uh, were questioning uh, because uh, uh, he's this massive uh, streamer on Twitch, he's pretty big. Hey, uh, why getting rid of him? So get, getting rid of him would be getting rid of someone on the level of like uh, Ninja or like Kai Sinet, but um. But but, but uh, for years, there's, uh, they were kind of hush hush about the situation. Nobody really addressed uh, why the ban happened. But uh, uh, Doctor Disrespect did it himself and admitted to some pretty uh, admitted to some pretty uh, some pretty bad th things. Uh, and so it started when a former Twitch employee he uh, brought up these kind of allegations as to why Doctor Disrespect was banned. And but then uh, Doctor Disrespect. Uh, seemingly tried to dispute it and then uh, told us why he was banned. Now, I do have the uh, tweet in front of me, the, uh, the uh, tweet longer that, that uh, he made. Hey, I'm not going to read it only because there are quite a bit of expletives, but uh, what I will do is, if I remember, I will link it in the description so you can check it out. But pretty much admitted to messaging Meyer, and in his words, uh, words uh, <coughs> Uh, in his words, his, uh, the conversations delving into inappropriate territory, and apparently, he, uh, this started back in 2017. So, uh, so, oh, uh, oh, he states that he was messaging a minor that uh, the messages went too much into the sexual realm at times, into the sexual realm at times. That's that's his words. Hurts and hurts, and I am paraphrasing a little bit, but but. Uh, but uh, he claims there was no intent and that nothing illegal happened and that no pictures uh, were shared or uh, but here and that uh, it wasn't a criminal case stuff like that at, at, at but uh, apparently when Twitch found out that's when the uh, ban happened and or something like that or when or essentially when it uh, came to light that is but but um, but this was pretty big and a lot of people were shocked and appalled and admittedly I was too now oh uh, granted doctors respect I uh, didn't really watch his content. Knew of him, of course, but I uh, didn't really watch his content. wasn't really super familiar. I was somewhat familiar with his uh, content and everything, hanging in his style of content. But otherwise, I uh, didn't really watch him. wasn't really a fan or anything. But this is still, oh, this, this was still uh, pretty, yeah, pretty bad. And, and, and a lot of people call it not that, that this is bad. This doesn't really absolve all of him. Like, like, uh, like nothing illegal happened. Thank God for that. But you still exchange uh, messages, sexual messages, with a minor. Her, her, uh, her messages that dealt in sexual territory. That can be a variety of things. But uh, that's still really bad. Now, uh, now, uh, how I've had to interact with minors before because my previous job, uh, we have minors that work in. Uh, the same job, so I've interacted, but never once did it cross my mind to interact in a sexual nature with minors, because, you know, as a normal functioning adult, that's just something you don't do, so the thought never crossed my mind of, hmm, there's this person who's much younger than me, and is underage, age, age. I should probably 
he uh, chat explicitly or sexually with them. Thought never crossed my mind. Uh, I mean, even though uh, in 2017 I uh, still would have been a minor myself. Oh, but uh, yeah, uh, never once did I think you know I should I should speak uh, I should speak inappropriately with this uh, minor. Like I should uh, delve into inappropriate territory with this minor. Thought never crossed my mind. So the fact that that it crossed his his aunt. Is and the fact that he's married, has a kid. Like, hey, admittedly, that's also bad, but that's that's probably the least. That's probably the least of it. But, it, but exchanging these inappropriate, uh, hit, uh, <clears throat> exchanging these inappropriate uh, conversations with the minor. Now, a lot of people also question and uh, the part where he says as uh, there was no intent or anything like that. And people brought up how uh, when you watched To Catch a Predator back in the day, hey, uh, that was the excuse that they used as well. Oh, that, that being, you know, oh, oh, I just came over, but I, I didn't have really have any intentions in uh, dealing with this minor or uh, who they uh, obviously thought was really minor. Or, um, or, yeah, there was no intentions, there was no... Uh, sexual intent or anything wasn't actually gonna do anything. Was just gonna hang out, whatever. Or, uh, or that's the excuse they use all the time. Uh, now, do I now do I think think uh, that do, do I think Doctor Strange telling the truth where there's no intent? Uh, who should we say uh, he knows for sure unless the messages ever make their way to the public? And I wasn't able to find whether or not the messages had made their way to the uh, to the public. Like, uh, if so, please do let me know, and maybe I'll do a follow up. But but, uh, but yeah, so still pretty, pretty bad, and definitely a very bad look. And, but it's also a bad look on Twitch's part because, as uh, as with no criminal case with the, is uh, who knows the type of messages is this also who does look bad on Twitch because they knew and seemingly didn't really do anything about it. They banned him. Cool. That cool. That's something. But hey, what about protecting this minor, protecting this underage person? And so it's just a really, really bad situation all throughout. Uh, uh, oh, but uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is that at uh, the Royal Rumble for uh, uh, 2025, that being next year, is taking place in Indianapolis. And in fact, there's uh, there's quite a few uh, events taking place uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, it's, uh, with, uh, through the next couple years. So, so this is courtesy of the... Uh, uh, courtesy of the article talking about it on W.com, um, uh, and I'm just going to read an uh, excerpt or two from here. It says, WWE Indiana Sports Corp. today announced a first-of-its-kind partnership that will bring WWE's three largest stadium events, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Royal Rumble, to Indianapolis. And kicking off with Royal Rumble on February 1st, 2025, Lucas Oil Stadium will host all three premium live events, including a two-night SummerSlam and two-night WrestleMania in future years. Now, how, uh, um... Now, it does say in future years, doesn't necessarily mean that SummerSlam will take place in 2025, although oh, Mi Mi uh, Minnesota is locked in for uh, SummerSlam 2026, but we still have to wait and see what they're doing for 2025. And uh, the one in Minnesota, that's going to be a two-night, so maybe the one next year will be a two-night as well. But, but a future WrestleMania uh, in Indianapolis as well. Oh, that, that's pretty big. That's that's some pretty big news. Uh, the number of people had wanted an Indian uh, wanted um, events, tense big events like that uh, to take place in Indianapolis, and uh, looks like they're finally getting their wish. And um, and also worth mentioning something that a lot of people are talking about it being in February. He admittedly, it's not that big a deal because it's right at the beginning of February. But it does feel kind of weird. It almost feels sacrilegious uh, not having Roy Rumble take place in January. It's like, really, it's not that big a deal. It's not, not Super Bowl of like, oh, the Roy Rumble's not taking place in January. Oh, this, oh, it's a big deal. It'll get the pitchforks and the torches. It's, it's not to that level. But it is going to feel a little bit weird having January come and go with, without a Royal Rumble. You know, it's, it's kind of, it, it, it's just a little. It is gonna take a little bit of getting used to, but really, it's not. It's not that big a deal. But, but uh, yeah. So, well, let me know. Are you guys excited for the Royal Rumble taking place in Indianapolis? Is it what you think is gonna go down at the Rumble? Uh, but uh, the next thing we're gonna talk about. Oh, uh, sticking with WWE. The uh, the uh, apparently, according to Triple H, the censorship will not be an issue on. Uh, Netflix. Uh, Triple H was on the Pat McAfee show where he uh, stated that 
which really won't really be censored on Netflix. Next, and a lot, a lot of this came in the wake of a segment that happened on Raw. Uh, I forget who was involved. I think uh, it was like Logan Paul or something like that. And, and I, I forget the exact segment uh, where it was heavily censored and a lot of people got upset and because you couldn't you couldn't hear anything. And and we've seen censorship e- even on uh, Peacock and everything where her went her back in like uh, at the Ministry Chamber in Australia where the whole crowd was flipping off Dom and uh, so. Um, so they had to uh, blur out, out, out um, their opinions and everything, or like the holy s chance, uh, <coughs> chance, uh, and sometimes do get uh, a, uh, at least on regular TV on pay per view, they don't really worry about them as much, or uh, Peacock I should say, but um, or they don't worry about them as much. But having uncensored WWE now we're talking like like this is something that people have been waiting for for years. For years people have been waiting. Uh, for the moment that WWE would finally say, you know, enough of the censorship, enough of the PG, we're going going straight back into the ads here, uh, and uh, we're letting them say uh, whatever they want. And the censorship, admittedly, sometimes, admittedly, I do kind of get it to an extent, but and but at the same time, it did get annoying for a lot of people. So to see that WWE is going to censorship, saying no more censorship when uh, WWE goes to Netflix, admittedly, is pretty cool. Yeah, well, it is a pretty interesting thing, idea there. So. Oh, uh, so how will it play? Uh, so, oh, what will, will a uncensored WWE be like for the first time in seemingly years? There's, I guess we're gonna find out. Oh, uh, come next year when WWE officially makes a move to Netflix. But the last thing that I want to talk about uh, as we conclude today's episode is um, is a phrase that I'm sure you've heard many times before. I'm sure some of the older folks have probably. Uh, uh, probably said it at some point, and I'm sure it's a phrase you've heard several times. But uh, it's the saying, "Misery, misery, loves company." Now, uh, what exactly does that mean? I mean, uh, when people say misery loves company, what what exactly are they talking about? How, uh, how, for me, how I interpret it is that when someone is miserable, or when there's a miserable feeling in the air, they want everybody else to be miserable with them, and. Oh, and they want to spread that misery as much as possible. Now, oh, you may wonder why they want to spread that misery. Uh, for me, usually, I feel that with some miserable people, they just love causing misery and causing chaos. And and if they're not happy, no one else gets to be happy. He essentially because because they're not happy. He uh, he. So when mis- when people say misery loves company, he. Some people, there are some people who, because they're not having a good time, no, son, you're not having a good time because uh, they're bringing that to you and trying to ruin your day and essentially taking out their frustrations in, on you and trying to spread that over to you. Who, uh, so how do you combat this type of thing? How do you combat a miserable per- person? Uh, and uh, the ever- there's another expression, kill them with kindness. It's uh, it's um. When you see misery trying to be spread, when you see people trying to incorporate hate people into their their misery as well to make everybody miserable, oh, uh, said stand up against it and repel that. Now, oh, uh, look, look, life sucks sometimes. Life, life does suck sometimes. Like oftentimes, you're not gonna have the best day. Hey, you know, oh, so, sometimes life does get in the way. Hey, but hey, but don't ruin somebody else's happiness because you're unhappy. He, uh, he, uh, I. If you're unhappy, but you see someone else is happy, instead of trying to ruin their happiness, now they're not happy. He, uh, instead, try to find the happiness within you, yourself and try to uh, try to uh, try to get it addressed. Like, well, why are you feeling unhappy? Why are you feeling miserable? So, oh, uh, oh, that would be uh, that I think would be the best way to try to combat it. Hey, but that's just me. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and turn on post notifications. So you know every time I upload a video, it's exclusively about. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this episode. But nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.